Hey, what's going on, everyone? We have uh, some crazy, crazy markets and a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, some things that I've never even seen before took place this week. Uh, and I, in fact, uh, just last night also had my biggest crude oil trade, uh, not only in P&L wise, but also in terms of points that I was able to pick up in crude oil. Um, we've got Netflix earnings that just came out after the bell today. April 21st, markets are moving, things are getting crazy. Um, so let's dive in and take a look at the charts here and see what we're working with. Uh, right now, I've got the crude oil K contract up on the screen right now. And what I didn't even know was possible is for crude oil futures or just any futures in general to go negative. So we actually cracked uh, the $0 number yesterday here in crude oil and <clears throat> traded all the way down to $40, negative $40 and 32 cents here. Um, and, you know, still managed to rally some of that back today here and now close, you know, $9 and six cents there. But overall, you know, this creates just a ton of fear, a ton of opportunity. Um, this contract is now expired. Um, it started uh, just a, a whirlwind effect that potentially, could impact us on a global scale, right? So what's going on with crude oil right now is the fact that crude prices uh, have just fallen so cheap. We've got this OPEC thing going on with this Russia thing going on. Obviously, we've got the coronavirus global kind of pandemic where, you know, for me, I, I'm not necessarily enjoying it, but I enjoy the fact that I can drive just outside the Washington, D.C. area and I don't hit my very much traffic. But at the same time, that's taking its toll because there's all these people that A, aren't driving. There's all of this freight that's not moving, right? Nobody's going to Michaels and Dix and uh, Neiman Marcus just filed bankruptcy. So all of these things are starting to take place where we're, A, we're not driving to those places. We're not picking up food. B, we're then also not having them take that product there where then it's not being moved by truck or by train or whatever the case is however the product gets there by plane something's got it shipped whatever um, and that's just putting an overall lack of demand uh, on crude and turned it negative yesterday which is just absolutely uh, like crazy to me so um, this contract here crude oil k contract uh, ends up rolling over to the new contract, which is forward slash CLM20 here today. Um, and I ended up taking a trade in the overnight session on this that um, I closed out uh, and was good for $27,970 on the day. And I only traded a four lot on this. Um, so some crazy, crazy action. I had a 20 cent risk with this trade. So I had about $800 worth of risk on the table. And it ends up turning into, you know, $27,970. Now, I didn't necessarily know or think that it was going to do this overnight like it did. I did think crude prices were going to go lower, hence why I got short. I was looking for about a dollar move. And when I woke up, it was $7 in profit. Um, you know, so I had a good five to one risk reward ratio when I initially took the trade that ends up turning into risking 20 cents and I think I uh, average net was six dollars and 96 cents uh, per contract on this move um, so just some crazy crazy stuff going on here in these markets uh, you can see we also did a little by and D trade there I'll talk about from the morning write-up um, and how I managed that one but you know what this ended up doing here and again I'm not necessarily the expert I don't know what's gonna you know, what's gonna come of this but TD Ameritrade ended up sending out closing trades only are allowed on the active month June contract. So that's the forward slash CLM contract. That's the contract I was trading last night. Um, they're closing trades only now. So we got to watch this carefully over the next few days and, you know, really see how does this start to, you know, kind of unfold across the broader markets. And when we look at the S and P's, you know, S and P's are down 76 and a half points today, 2.72%. That's not that big of a move. We're kind of used to seeing, you know, these two, three kind of 4% moves over the past, you know, two, three months here now with this whole uh, situation going on. And, 
I had a very important level up here, 28, 60, 75 on the S&Ps. We've now sold about 130 points off that level. Um, and like I wrote this morning, you know, what ends up happening next from this, how this kind of unfolds, um, I really don't exactly know, but I'm going to be watching the charts closely um, and continuing to trade them as I do. The, the setups are still working. The levels are still fine. Everything there is going on, but it's these other things that are going to start to unfold um, that we really have to you know, keep a close eye on. Um, you know, 20 some million people out of work uh, and all these things are going to start to unfold. Does the market already have that kind of baked into, you know, these prices here? Or, you know, we've rallied, you know, 20, 30% off lows, 2,200 up to 2,800. Or our earnings going to start kicking in and we're realizing this is actually worse than we think it is. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm standing there with, you know, crude. Obviously, can't do any more closing or any more opening trades here with crude oil. Um, I do think it most likely ends up going a little bit lower. Um, but it's not something that I really want to step in to the long side right here in crude oil. I still think it has some more room to the downside. Uh, yes, we'll get a little bit of kind of a rally back here, um, you know, from current prices. But overall, I think it's just, you know, one of those things where we just need to kind of sit on the sidelines um, and just be patient. Uh, I threw it up on my Instagram story just the other day talking about uh, a book that's only like 49 pages long about the psychology of the market uh, and just that delays are less costly than losses. So even if we miss you know, the first kind of wave or the first boat, if you will, on the next move in crude oil or the next move in the markets, um, I would rather miss that move than take a position that's not quite there, not quite ready yet, and end up taking a loss from that. Because now, you know, I'm a month down the road. Instead of, you know, being flat, I've now taken a loss and I'm still a month down the road, right? So delays are less costly than losses um, and definitely something that I'm implementing more and more into my own trading as well as the quality over quantity. Um, so that's what I'm looking at here with uh, crude oil. I did take a couple other trades on the day. I'll go ahead and post a screenshot here uh, up on the board. Uh, I traded a little bit of Amazon, a little bit of BYND, uh, which I want to touch on here now. Uh, BYND, and the reason I want to touch on this one is this one came straight from the morning right up here. So each and every morning, um, I do what I call the morning right up here. And this is where I basically take everything I'm thinking, looking at, uh, and I dump it all into a, a Google Doc and then kind of drill it down from there as to what I think are the most important things to watch on the day. Um, and here was the BYND play. So BYND, this is my top watch on the day, only by default here, but the setup is a gap over 85.23 that can pull back and hold that level with targets above at 93.75 on the day. Now, what I mean by default here is there were only a few things gapping up with the market gapping down this morning, showing a relative strength, you know, bias to those underlyings. And if that's the case, I want to be able to take advantage of that type of opportunity. So here's the chart in BYND. I traded 600 shares of this, good for $1,276 here on the day. Um, now, I didn't I didn't place my orders. I didn't buy right at 85.23. As you can see, the low here was 85. So we wicked down into this really, really nicely from the open there. You can see that was in the first two minutes of the day we came down and traded that level. Um, I actually ended up waiting, and I'll pull this aside. We'll look at the two minute chart here. I actually ended up waiting until we started coming back through the close of this first two minute bar right here about 86.50s or so. Uh, and I think my average fill was like 86.70s and some change there. Um, and then took this up and trailed out on this pullback right there. Now again, the markets I thought were gonna get a little bit more of a pullback today. This was a counter trend trade on a relative strength stock. It ended up working out nicely here for us. Um, you know, it worked, you know, basically seven points top to bottom, 85s to 92s. I pulled two points out of that, out of potentially seven. Now, again, I had targets up above 93.75s. Those didn't get hit here today. Um, but nonetheless, we managed this trade accordingly uh, and ended up being able to pull out uh, $2 on that trade, good for $1,276 there. So the real question is, you know, like I said, the markets in this state with um, the crude oil contract and we've got earnings coming up and all these things, right? So the first big company that I'm seeing the report earnings here is in Netflix. Um, 
Netflix just reported after the bell today. You can see uh, traded all the way up to a high of $485.17. Now, this had about a $45 expected move in the after hours. Call the closing price 435. That puts us up to like 480. So we're right. I mean, we're only five points away from closing print right now at 438 here in Netflix. So we have stayed really contained inside of that expected move so far. Now, the one thing I will say here is that Netflix is a little bit different in the sense that it's a stock that, you know, obviously people are at home. People are watching more TV. They're watching more Netflix. They're watching more Disney Plus. They're watching more Amazon Prime, whatever the case is, right? Um, so this name, I don't think is going to start to really show us kind of the broader, uh, you know, the the roots of how the economy is actually doing Um just based on Netflix. I am liking the fact that it is staying contained inside of the expected move here so far. Um, and my game plan here for tomorrow, just to wrap this video up, um, is if tomorrow if Netflix can crack under $427 here, then I'm going to be looking to get short here for a move down to 407 to 397.50. This will be uh, something that's in the morning right up here tomorrow, depending on Again, how Netflix opens. If we open down at $400, then obviously that game plan changes. Uh, but if we do kind of manage to stay right through here, somewhere around $440, $445 tomorrow, then I'll look for that to potentially crack at some point tomorrow. Uh, and then we've got those targets down below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want uh, to get those morning write-ups, there's going to be a link uh, in the description below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell notification so you know when we post new content on this channel. Trying to start doing that more frequently here uh, coming into earnings season. Thank you guys so much. Hope you guys all had a great day and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.